air duct terrier for show, you're going to want to strip them, but if you're just grooming them to just grow them at home because you're in quarantine because it's COVID, like most of the world, this is how you're going to do it. Um, to accomplish this clip, you're going to need um, your clippers, a number 40 blade for the pads and the ears. You're going to need a number 10 for the belly. You're going to need a number 7 for the pattern. Oh, and we'll, we'll do a number 10 on the top. Actually, let's go ahead and do that number 10 on the top of the head real quick. If there's any place that you can't see, you just uh, move around me. Can you see the head? Just like with the snouter, what you're going to do is brush the brows forward. Also, if you don't have a Chris Christensen brush, get one because it's revolutionary. I'm just saying. So you're going to brush the brows forward. You're going to, because he's a bigger dog, you're going to leave a little bit more than a snouter. About that much brow, okay? And then you're going to take the number 10 blade and everything that's behind that brow to the base of the skull has to go. Keep in mind, I've never done this dog before. I don't know how he's gonna act. I, I don't know anything about him, so we're just learning each other together, I guess. Now, I am in my grooming shop, so if somebody comes in or somebody calls, I have to end this segment of the video and start again in another segment. Good boy. Be very careful when you're doing the ears to keep the blade flat against the skin. And so you're going to go about a blade length down the cheek. Always. And we'll definitely come back to this later, but for now, that's a good start on the head. When we go to finish, then we'll come back and kind of tidy everything up. Always make sure you're holding your dog's ear when you're shaving the ear because when the dog goes to do what he just did, you'll feel it and you can move the blade. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a cut ear. And believe me, cut ears are not fun. They bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed and bleed. And bleed. And just not fun at all. So, all right. So now we're gonna take our ten on. Gonna attach our number seven blade. I hope that focused. And we're gonna start. Just gonna make a strip down the back first. Ooh, this guy's got some thick, thick hair though. Just thick, thick hair. Hope you guys can uh, see what I'm doing and just kind of know. So you're going to go as far down as the um, as the, the base of the tail. Does that make sense? Hey, okay, buddy, good boy. All right. I'm going to come up here and do the same thing on the neck. Just do a little strip down. Now on the front leg and then on the neck, you're going to go as far down as the shoulder. So his shoulder is right here. So this is as far down as you're going to go. And now that we've got that done, we're going to go over here on the other side and kind of go um, with a skirt on this side. It's okay, buddy. You're doing good. You're doing a good job. Actually, no, I'm not. Let me go ahead and get this off of his neck on this side before I do that.
Good boy. All right. This, guys, is essential to grooming. You have to have this or your blades will just chew up the hair instead of cutting it. Right, that's what this blade is doing at this very moment. Okay. Let's turn you around, buddy. Come on. Let's turn you around. Good boy. Good boy. It's okay. It's okay. Relax, good boy. Okay, his little hips getting in trouble. Okay, buddy. When we get on this side, we're going to go around and just get all this out from under the neck right here. And we're going as far down as. This little nodule right here. So technically, this is the shoulder up here, the shoulder blades. Um, I should say the collarbone. That's that's what I was looking for, not the shoulder, the collarbone. You want to make sure that their head is up while you're setting this pattern, because if you don't, you're going to cut too low on accident. Okay, once you get your line straight on your front leg, you're going to take this off. And as you guys can tell, the, um, the pattern is higher on the back leg than on the front leg. And that's because the skirt is angled upwards. Basically, you're making a huge triangle from here upwards. And his um, his collarbone may be, the breastbone may be a little lower than the collarbone right here. I can't tell, really, because it's got a lot of hair. But we may end up lowering this just a little bit. So, what we're going to do is, you can come around here so I'm not moving here again. That'd be great. Just gonna lift his head up, and when you lift his head up, you're gonna feel for this uh, little nodule right here, this little notch of bone. This is the collar. This is the breastbone. So the skirt's gonna go as low as this. That's the lowest point, and as high as this right here. Okay. So we're gonna go and bring this neck and chest on down to that breastbone. See, and as I suspected, that breastbone and this collarbone are not quite even. So we're going to bring this down just a teeny tiny bit. But that's as low as the skirt's going to go. So you're going to follow this line around to the dog's front leg. Alright. Good boy. Good boy, Master Bruce. Alright, now that we got the front leg started, we're going to go back here and start angling upwards. So what I want you to do is take your clickers and go um, from the middle downward and don't go that way. Don't go from head to tail. Go from back bone to belly, if that makes sense. This, uh, 
this incline right here is just a very gradual, gradual incline. You can barely tell that it's um, angled, but there is an angle there. You think he may have been hit by a car or something? He's got a really sad spot on his back hip right here, so we're not exactly sure what's going on with that, but um, that's why he's shaking his little leg. It probably hurts him, don't it, buddy? It's okay. Oh, he's so pretty. Man, he's pretty. I can't believe they found this dog on the side of the road. That's just crazy. But they're taking good care of him now, so... Boy, he's very well behaved. He's a good boy. So we're gonna brush all this down. And then once he's bathed and dried, we will um you know fluff all this up and blend it in a little better. But for now, this is what we got. So you can see the line goes whoop. It's a gradual angle, and then this whole leg is like a hump. I can't explain it better than that this whole leg is kind of like a chicken leg it's, it's bigger at the top but of course we're, we're gonna blend that in you know a little bit later so let's knock all of our excess hair off real quick try to turn this fellow around Ooh, around again Good boy. Go ahead and grab that. Get that off there. Sometimes it's easier to uh, start with the back leg, especially when they got a full coat like this. Start with the back leg and angle down rather than trying to angle up. Alright, you're gonna take your seven blade and go ahead and go over this tail. Sorry, buddy. I almost fixed in case you get you a bath. Now their hair is very thick, so don't be alarmed if your uh, clippers bog down because mine are professional clippers and they are bogging down like to the max right now. So that's a good rough out. I think I'm going to take him and give him a bath and give him a blow dry. Go ahead and turn up this booty butt. So yeah, I'm going to take him and give him a bath and a blow dry real quick. And um, we'll see you guys in a few minutes once he's been bathed we and blow back. Dry. We have Mr. Bruce back with us. He has been bathed and dried and fluffed up. And um, so we're going to go ahead and finish him and get him on his way. Now he has a sore on the other side on his leg so I'm just going to show you the uh, finishing technique on this side and then you're just going to replicate that on that side. And now that he's bathed and dried you can see all the flaws in the haircut. In the um, in the angle of the pattern you can see just everything that's wrong. So. That's why you want to go ahead and do a good bath and dry before you do a finish cut on your dog because once the hair is fluffed up, you can see everything. So we're going to go ahead and um, take this pattern on down a little bit. Look at that, buddy. Good boy. Take this on down.
Now once you get the line exactly where you want it, you want to kind of take your blade and scoop outward. Hope you guys can see what I'm talking about. Not pushing all the way down, in other words. You're going to taper this into um, the skirt. Alright? Go back over the, uh, the back. After you brush it up, I think I brushed it up, didn't I? Um, after you brush it up, you're going to be able to see even more um, uneven patches. So you're just going to go back over that um, with your number seven blade. Now then, we'll take this and brush this down. If you have thinning shears, that would be the best thing to use for um, blending in the skirt. If you don't, is that your foot on my over? If you don't, your curved scissors will work just fine. I'm going to do the curved scissors first just to show you how, and then I'm going to use my thinning shears. Just to let you guys know, this is a curly coated dog so just like the poodle when you go to um, blow dry you're going to brush backwards all right so all you're doing is taking the very ends off the top of this skirt we're just making it blend in we're not taking any length off per se you're just taking the very ends off of the top of the skirt see how that's looking and that's with the um curved shears it's not as good if you do it with straight shears I'm gonna go ahead and go in with my thinning shears and you're gonna go up and down not sideways don't ever do it sideways because you will jack it up you're gonna go up and down you can brush this out and as you can see that's pretty uniform right there So then we're going to go over here. Take some bulk off of this. Take some bulk off of this. And brush that down. And now that's pretty uniform. We'll get to the back leg in just a second, but let's go ahead and do the front leg too. And we're going to do the same thing. Move here, buddy. It's okay. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to hurt you, buddy. I promise. You're a good boy. And if you want to, just to make sure you don't take off too much, just use the very tip of the scissors. Blended leg. <laughs> then you can just pull this out with your your hand, just kind of trim up whatever is kind of excess, you know. Um, and then the legs get left, and again you could kind of trim up whatever is excess, but most of the time we just leave them because a lot of times they don't grow much bigger than this. Like the hair doesn't grow much bigger than this. Hey buddy, you're doing fine. You're a good boy. So a lot of um, terriers don't like their feet messed with, so I will um, brush out their feet ahead of time and trim their feet while they're still on the table. That way we don't have to pick up his foot and um, 
since his since his um other back legs messed up he don't have good balance because he can't really see he's, he's pulling because he he can't really uh balance on that back leg that's hurt because it hurts bless his heart he got a bum leg all right now let's move on to the back leg You could do this with a brush. You could also just pull it out with your fingers. I mean, it works the same way. Now, I, I've already brushed his leg upwards like this to make this hump as big as possible and as high as possible so that we can trim it down to size. So once you brush his leg forward or up, you're gonna take your curved scissors and go along the curve of the leg not taking off a lot and of course he wasn't full coated honestly um i've seen airedales with denser coats than that or more dense coats than that It's okay, buddy. Don't oh, sit down, buddy. Don't sit down. You're fine. You're fine. And we're just going along the edges here. Just taking off the little stray hairs. And we're going to trim his foot while it's on the table for him. Bless his little heart. He's so sweet. He's a sweet little guy. Still, buddy. Be real still. Alright. Then you're gonna lift up the tail and kind of go around underneath and get that hair on the inside of the leg, just like you did with the outside of the leg, just taking off the very end. And you people wonder why groomers have back pain and shoulder pain. It's because we'd rather move than move the dog. That we get all contorted and twisted and all that good stuff. All right, so now we're going to go over how to shape up the hump. He's looking nice and uniform now. We brushed him up. So you're just gonna make a round shaped hump. Just like that. Just round the top up. Basically you want this top of this leg to look like a turkey leg. Now, some people may want to leave that that hump very defined, but traditionally it gets blended, so that's what I'm going to do in this situation. I'm going to take the scissors, and just like you did over here, just going to go up and down with the scissors. Just be careful that you know what you're doing with your scissors because it, it's very easy to chop up this hair, like this type of hair. But just just be very careful and make sure you know exactly what you're doing before you try to do this. 
learn your scissors is what I'm saying before you try to grow your own dog at home. All right, so as you can see, he is pretty uniform on his body. And that's pretty well blended, I'd say. His tail, you can go ahead and take whatever off of his tail. But that's um, pretty short already. So, um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do now is turn him around and finish up his face. And that will be the end of this video. Boy, he's beautiful. He is absolutely gorgeous. They said the lady that found him thought that he was um, a poodle mix. <laughs> I said no. I don't, I don't think he's got any poodle in him. His Airedales are naturally wavy and curly. Alright. Now also I want to mention if your Airedale has a lot of hair under here, you can go under here and with your scissors angled that way. Make sure you get scissors that have rests on either side so that when you can, when you do this, you can rest your finger and have more control. But if, you're, if your Airedale has a lot of hair under here, which this one doesn't, you can go under here and kind of shape it up using this angle. These scissors are cheat scissors, I'm just saying. All right. Man, he's beautiful. Okay, come on, buddy. Come on, Bruce. Good boy. Good boy. You can sit now. You can sit down if you want. Or you don't have to, but you can if you want to. Alright, so we're going to brush these eyebrows forward. And their head's supposed to look kind of like a cylinder. Um, so you're going to take your scissors backwards, upside down and carve out the middle of the eyebrows but not all the way to the skin just just barely and then once you've carved out the eyebrows on that side you're going to come over here to this side of the eyebrow hopefully you guys are able to see as i'm moving around you're going to come over here to this side of the eyebrow and angle it towards the nose and the further you go towards the nose the narrower it's supposed to be And the same on this side, except backwards. We can kind of go ahead and go in here with these scissors and kind of carve out, you know, an eye hole. Because we don't want them to not be able to see. It's okay. It's okay, Bruce. Good boy. All right. Now, last thing we want to do is shape up the um, underneath of the head right here. And again, it's supposed to look like a cylinder. And we're gonna brush that down. Come in here with these scissors, angled this way, and just go straight back. Some people shave all this underneath, um, but. This lady didn't want that, so we're not going to do that to him. It's okay, buddy. Good boy. Good boy. It's okay. Oh, good boy. 
Now, once you get them turned around, you can go on here and kind of shape up the insides of the front legs. And then if it needs it, you can go in with that 40 blade and kind of shape up these ears. And that about does it. That is a finished Airedale stereo for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And I still have another side to do. But like I said about his uh, injury on his back leg, we're going to do that side off camera. Um, just so you guys don't have to see that. So um, let me go ahead and... Take a 40 blade and clean these ears up. And as I've said before, but it's worth saying again, um, if you're gonna do the blade with it, um, if you're gonna do the ears with the blade, you want to um, make sure that the blade is flat against the ear. And also, uh, when you're doing the edging, use a 40 because there's not really enough space um, in between the teeth for the skin to to slip in to get a neck. So that's why we do the ears with a 40. Not the whole ear, but the edge of the ear. I'd rather do that than scissor because especially um, with dogs with straight pointy ears, it's easier to, to nick them with scissors. So. That his, his head cleaned up and his ears and face cleaned up and he is looking good and ready to go home so hopefully you guys enjoyed like i said if you haven't already subscribe so that the content stays free and enjoy the rest of your day thank you have a blessed day